رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new live edition of our program Gardens of the Pious. As usual, we begin by praising Allah the Almighty alone and sending the best peace and blessings upon His most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, today's episode is number 106, is actually. Uh, 362 and it is uh, the second episode in explaining um, a new chapter which is uh, the prohibition of wearing silk and then silk and gold for men the hadith which we'll begin with today inshallah is hadith number 806 in the series of Riyadh al-Salihin which is compiled by the great Imam, Imam Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. An Ali ibn Abi Talib, رضي الله عنه قال, رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخذ حريرا فجعله في يمينه وذهبا فجعله في شماله ثم قال إن هذين حرام على ذكور أمتي. In Hadaini Haramun Ala Zukuri Ummati. The hadith is collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan. May Allah have mercy on him. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an narrated I saw the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him taking gold, uh, taking hold of some silk in his right hand and some gold in his left hand. Then he said, these two items are forbidden for the men of my ummah. Males, Muslim males, are not allowed to wear either one of these uh, items, silk and gold. This is what is forbidden with regards to, uh, you know, the material or the fabric to wear gold and silk for men is forbidden. And we have studied before in the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, whoever would wear silk in this life will be deprived from wearing silk in the hereafter in paradise. The hadith has a very interesting indication, which is it, it, it specifies who is not permitted to wear silk and obviously gold, which he said, Ala dhukuri ummati. So for men it is not permitted and uh, that applies also to youngsters, not only to those who are above the age of puberty. So teenagers and younger kids, boys are not allowed to wear silk and gold. In the previous episode, we spoke about the wisdom, generally speaking, behind the prohibition of what is forbidden in Islam, and specifically uh, these items. And we also made mention of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever wears silk in this life, obviously of men, will not wear it in paradise. And the indication of that. Because Allah the Almighty stated in the Quran about the dwellers of paradise, He said, For them, for the dwellers of paradise, ما يشاءون فيها whatever they desire, whatever they wish, whatever they will. Anything they dream of is theirs. There is no no. There is no prohibitions. Because prohibitions in this life are means of tests and trials to verify the compliance of the believers. <coughs> That's why we say the general meaning of al-ibadah, worship, Al-ibadah is not only referring to the prayers or to the fasting or to uh, performing pilgrimage alone. No. The general meaning of the ibadah is compliance, is a ta'ah. 
So if a person has an access to do anything which is forbidden and he abstains from doing it, this is an act of worship. This is ibadah, like the rest of the ibadah. So there is ibadah by fulfilling the commandment, and there is a ibadah or a worship by abstaining from what is forbidden. If the person assumes the intention and wants to do and commit a sin, then he simply abstain from committing the sin for the sake of Allah, he will be rewarded for that. Not only that the punishment will be waived, but he rather will be rewarded for that because he abstained from committing the sin while he is capable to do it for the sake of Allah. This is called worship or ibadah. But in the hereafter, it's not time for worship. It is time to enjoy the reward and the compensation for the worship, for the compliance that the believers have observed uh, in the life of this world. So, so when the Prophet says, whoever drinks wine in this dunya will not drink it in the hereafter. Whoever wears silk, obviously of men, in the life of this world will not get to wear silk in the hereafter. It's a very serious indication, which means they will be banned from entering paradise. Because once you enter Al-Jannah, there is no restriction. You don't say, well, I want to drink this and say, no, 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 because you used to drink in the dunya, you won't be able to drink it here. No, in Al-Jannah, there is no such thing. Obviously, the believers will be purified from their sins if a Muslim, a person who testified to the oneness of Allah and to the message of all the messengers uh, before and including Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shall not abide eternally in hellfire. But who can afford to even spend a few days, a few weeks, or a few years in, in hellfire to be purified from his sins or her sins. Our ultimate dua should be, O oh Allah, take us straight to paradise without previous reckoning or punishment. The Prophet said, Man nuqish al hisaba uzrib. If Allah is going to audit and go through the details of the hisab and the reckoning, then the person will definitely be ruined. But the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook the record of the person out of mercy, especially if the person was not involved in major sins or if the person have repented before his death. So while we're still alive, while we still have a chance, these ahadith are not just to warn and frighten us. These ahadith are also meant to exhort us. You want to wear silk as much as you want. Dijbaj, Istabraq, Sundus, and all of that, the, the, the real silk, you're going to wear it in paradise. But for men in the dunya, is forbidden. Similarly, wearing gold for men, it is also forbidden, period. You don't say it's a small amount or it is the, my wedding ring and uh, it may be considered like a bad omen if I take it off. Uh, there is no such thing. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam observed one of his companions who was sitting in the halqa and he was wearing a gold ring. So he took it off of his finger and he threw it away. Then he said, why would one of you tend to wear a burning coal in his hand? This is similar to that. Forbidden means forbidden. Whether we know a specific reason for it for now or we will find out later or we will not find out. Because once we believe that Allah the Almighty is the true creator and the only creator and he is the only one who is worthy of worship, you're not going to discuss every command with him and question his wisdom. And why do we have to do this this way and why do we have to abstain from this and so on. The following hadith is narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an and is collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال حرم لباس الحرير والذهب على ذكور أمتي وأحل لإناثهم That's hadith number 807 narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari May Allah be pleased with him He said that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said Wearing silk and gold has been made unlawful for males and unlawful for the females of my ummah. 
So for women, it is okay to wear gold and ornaments. For men, no, it is not. They may wear uh, silver, like a silver ring, it is okay. But gold, no. Women, they may wear as much silk fabric as they want, but men, no. We are not allowed to wear silk or gold. This is for uh, men. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him, Kati Musir al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the following hadith, hadith number 808, 808. Qal, nahana al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an wa fi alayhi. Okay. So the Prophet وسلم, in this hadith forbade the companions to drink out of gold and silver utensils. It is not permissible to eat in gold or silver dishes or using silver uh, or gold um, uh, forks, spoons, knives. It is not permissible. So the Prophet وسلم, forbade us to drink out of gold and silver vessels or eat in them. And then the Prophet وسلم, also forbade the wearing of silk and the badge or sitting on them. So sitting on fabrics which made of silk, you know, uh, is not permitted as well. Not just wearing them, not just wearing them. Wearing silk fabrics is totally forbidden for men. It's a major sin. How did you know that it's a major sin? Because the Prophet وسلم, warned that men who would wear silk in this life will not get to wear it in the hereafter. That's a serious punishment. Okay? So wearing silk or sitting on silk fabric, the bed sheet or the cover or the comfort or the pillowcase, all of that is not permissible. All right. But as I said in the previous episode, there are some exceptions. Like what? That will be explained in the following chapter, chapter number 123, 123, which is known as Babu Jawazi Lups al Hariri Liman Bihi Hakka. The permissibility of wearing silk for uh, one who has some itching. Some people are allergic to linen. Some people are allergic, believe it or not, to cotton, and some are allergic to uh, wool. You know, in the peninsula back then, most of their clothes were from wool, all what they have sheep. So that would be the main source of, uh, you know, shaving the fur, uh, the wool of the sheep, and woven it and making fabrics, whether the outer garment or even the qamis, out of that. So. It creates static, you know, sometimes when you're wearing this clock and I'm going for Fajr prayer and I just touch it like that. If anybody shakes hand with me, it creates static and you can see a spark coming out of that because of uh, that. So some people are, are definitely allergic to that. And the only other option is the silk fabric. Uh, if the doctors recommend it and say that you can only wear silk, that's an exception. Similar to all what is forbidden in Islam, فمن اضطر في مخمصة غير متجانف لإثم فإن الله غفور رحيم. If a person is forced or is in a necessity and doesn't have an alternative, doesn't have a choice, then Allah Almighty will pardon that person. Whether if the uh, prohibition is concerning eating something which is forbidden and the person doesn't have any other choice to save his life, he's got to eat that. Or drinking likewise, or wearing uh, silk for instance, while it is forbidden, but he's allergic to all fabrics except um, uh, the silk, then in this case it is permissible. So the Prophet وسلم, permitted these two companions as in the following hadith which is agreed upon its authenticity. An Anas ibn Malikin, radiyallahu anhu, qal, rakhasa 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم للزبير وعبد الرحمن بن عوف رضي الله عنهما في لبس الحرير لحكة كانت بهما عند حديث متفق عليه أنس ابن مالك May Allah be pleased with him Narrated that the messenger of Allah Peace be upon him um, Permitted as an exception As an exception He gave a concession To two companions As Zubair ibn al-Awwam And Abdul Rahman ibn Awf May Allah be pleased with them To wear shirts made out of silk Because of the itching And the allergy That they were suffering from so here, the Prophet ﷺ considered the condition of these two companions, not because Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was a very, very rich companion. No, not at all. It is simply because the Prophet ﷺ knew that they have this medical condition. So they said, we can't wear but silk because of this condition. He said, no problem. The person is supposed to be trustworthy. So when you say, well, this is my condition, we say, okay, خلاص, you're permitted, no problem. You're not blameworthy. Like exactly when somebody comes and he asks me, Sheikh, I gave a divorce to my wife. Number one, if somebody says, I have a question about divorce because a friend of mine divorced his wife and he asked me to ask you, I say, I don't answer any divorce questions from a second person. It must be the person who utter the word of divorce or his wife. Why? Because there will be some variation in the story. Some emotions will interfere in the story. Okay. Well, in this case, when the person says, I say to my wife this and this and that, I ask him, what was your intention? Because if the word was not the word of divorce, it is an ambiguous word. It may be considered this or that. He says, well, my intention was, like if he says, um, I swear that you're not visiting this person or you're not talking to this person and if you do, you will be divorced. What was your intention? His intention will determine whether the person, whether the person eh, has already divorced his wife or it wasn't a divorce, it was a threat or it may be considered as an oath which would require the ransom of an oath. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with his companions likewise. When he returned from the battle of Tabuk, some people whom he knew for sure that they were pure hypocrites, they walked in and said, oh, Prophet of Allah, forgive me because I was too busy or my mother was sick or my son was not feeling good or my wife was giving birth. And the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would accept their excuses while he is definitely aware that they're lying. Okay? And Allah Almighty has informed him in the Quran that he knows that they're lying. It doesn't mean that the Prophet وسلم, was not aware of their uh, evil nature. No, he was fully aware of their evil nature. But he dealt with people according to what is known as Al Zahir. He come and he asked the Prophet وسلم, a question. He would answer you in the light of your statement. Maybe you're telling the truth. Maybe you're lying. You got an answer based on the, how the question was presented. Obviously, these two companions, great companions, as Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, are among the ten heaven-bound companions. Men al-Ashrat al-Mubasharina bil Jannah. So when they had, you know, when, when Abdul Rahman ibn Auf told that he would slow down in entering paradise, he offered to give away all his wealth. I wouldn't like to keep anything that may hinder me or even slow me a bit from entering paradise. They didn't have a, any problem sacrificing anything and everything for the sake of Allah the Almighty. So it won't be a problem to give up on wearing silk. Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said that when we heard the caller of the Messenger of Allah saying that, Oh people, indeed Allah has forbidden drinking and all form of intoxicants have been become uh, absolutely forbidden. He said that Abu Talha, his stepfather, was drinking, so he dropped, he dropped the glass of wine, and they started pouring wine in the streets. It was running like rivers or streams. Why? Immediate compliance. So, I hope 
that the audience would not only benefit out of that, but would share it with some family members who take it very easy. I see a lot of people in the masjid, they're still wearing gold. I'm talking about men. And in Hajj, I see some brothers wearing gold chains. Yes, gold chains, necklace. It's not permissible for women to wear necklace anyway, whether it's silver or gold or any other uh, material. In addition to wearing gold, it is not permitted. And sometimes when you speak to somebody and say, you know, I, I didn't know that. Okay, then what? <laughs> what is next? You know, I'll, I'll take it off. When? You know, but, you know, I got to tell my wife first because, you know, she will feel bad. She will feel bad about what? There's something between you and Allah the Almighty. He said, you are not allowed to wear gold. That's it. Bottom line. يَعْمِلُ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَىٰ جَمْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ مِنَ النَّارِ فَيَضْعُهَا فِي يَدِهِ It is as bad as holding fast on a burning coal. No one can do that. So why would you do it? You know, to please whom and for the sake of what? Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, the whole life is not worth it. The whole life, we got to look at it and perceive it as an exam room. You're coming to take your finals, you answer your sheet, you hand it over and you leave. This is how short and brief it is. We got to look at it this way. May Allah bless you. Okay. Uh, Maya Hadi says in her question here, is it permissible to hire a non-Muslim company to clean the inside carpet of the masjid? Should we be always nice to the kids even though they are not respectful? Uh, she has three questions. I would like to answer the first question first. Hiring a non-Muslim company to clean the inside the carpet of the masjid. Um, I hope we understand that Muslim women, Muslim women, who have the menses are not allowed to enter the masjid during the menses. Not only that they are not allowed to pray, they are not allowed also to enter the masjid. So when you hire a company and, and people are in a state of uh, janaba, this is not a necessity. You know, if, if we have non-Muslims are coming to learn and we have an open house for them, it's a necessity in order to educate them. But you know, taking care of the cleaning of the masjid, we can definitely find a, a, a Muslim company. We can do it ourselves. We can volunteer to do it. Uh, but if it is the last resort and we don't have any other choice, we have to clean up the masjid, it will be the only option. Yes, but it shouldn't be uh, the, uh, the priority. It shouldn't be the first option. We should take care of cleaning up the masjid by ourselves for this reason. Number one, because, you know, the concept of tahara and those who shall enter the masjid should be in a state of tahara number one number two when we we had a similar uh, condition uh, back in the states and alhamdulillah for decades now we've been cleaning up our masjid by ourselves and we feel it's an honor the physicians the doctors the surgeons everybody competes to do that after studying the hadith of this woman who used to clean up the masjid at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when she died, they buried her without notifying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and um, he inquired about her when he missed her. They said she died. He said, Why didn't you tell me? They said that, you know, when she died, we just buried her. We didn't want to disturb you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kind of actually disturbed and he said, ala qabriha. Take me to her grave. And there the Prophet ﷺ went and he led the funeral prayer in front of her grave. There is another narration where it says that he saw her doing the same in Al-Jannah. So it is such a praiseworthy act to clean up uh, the masjid. Uh, should we be always nice to the kids even though they are not respectful? You know, education relies on gentleness, kindness, and firmness as well. Not only gentleness and kindness. And not all kids are the same. So some kids uh, are naughty, really naughty. So you have to be a little firm with them. Sometimes you even have to ground the child. And there are some kids who are super nice. They would just, you know, uh, you know, comply with any instructions and they will benefit out of that. So of course, in this case, uh, you have to be nice to them. 
So it depends and it varies from uh, a child to another. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الرفق إن الله يعطي على الرفق ما لا يعطي على غيره. So kindness is given the priority, no doubt. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah uh, in a few minutes to study some more a hadith and answer some more of your questions. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Insha'Allah in this segment we'll begin a new chapter which deals with the items which were not allowed to sit upon or use them even uh, as a spread for our beds or our seats or our rides. And this is for both men and women. And those items are not many actually. Um, the chapter is chapter number 124. The chapter deals with the forbidding of the use of tiger leather for sitting and sleeping or riding on it. Uh, the first hadith, hadith number 810. عن معاوية ابن أبي سفيان رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تركب الخز ولا النمارة and this is a Hassan hadith collected by Abu Dawood in his Sunan معاوية ابن أبي سفيان رضي الله عنهما narrated that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said do not ride on silk stuff and tiger skins. The word ride here means to sit upon or to use it as a cover on the back of your ride or as a spread to sleep upon or as a cover for the mattress. So the predators or those animals which are considered as predators and wild animals, when they die, eh, they are known as ما لا يؤكل لحمه is animals who cannot eat their flesh not because of the tazkiyah issue or the slaughtering or the sacrifice those animals the predators were not allowed to eat their flesh their meat and accordingly were not permitted to use their skin even if it is tanned whether it is tanned or not tanned it is not permitted so those who you know they go hunting or they, they trade in, these, in the skin of such uh, predators, lions, foxes, wolves, bears, uh, tigers. Uh, basically, their trade is also forbidden because whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids the use of anything, then its price is forbidden as well. It's not permitted to use it nor to sell it. We have a very interesting hadith, hadith which is agreed upon its authenticity, collected by both Bukhari and Muslim, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ حَرَّمَ بَيْعَ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْتَةِ وَالْخِنْزِيرِ وَالْأَصْنَامِ Indeed, Allah has forbidden the selling of wine and the dead animals, the swine flesh, <coughs> And the swine in general, the, the, the pigs, well, aslam, the statues. Um, whether you say, well, they are used as souvenirs and they are not being used for worship anymore, it is definitely forbidden. So the price and the profit which is generated out of selling these items is absolutely forbidden. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Araayta shuhum al-maytati? You know, an animal have died. What about if we collect the fat of this animal? We can benefit out of it. Sometimes they melt it, they use it as a paint. It's adhesive. They use it to paint the ships uh, and to paint the skin out of it or the leather. 
and people use it for the uh, oil lamp. So the Prophet وسلم, said, no, it is haram. So you're not allowed to benefit out of anything out of it. It's dead, it's najis, it is impure. Even use it as an oil for the lamp is not permitted. A paint for the ship is not permitted. Then he spoke about the Jews, where he said that Allah the Almighty has punished them, God has punished them, because when he had forbidden them from the utilization of ash-shuhum, fa'ajmaluhu thumma ba'uhu fa'akalu thamanahu. They were forbidden to use it, to use the fat themselves. So what they did is they melted and they sold it. If Allah the Almighty forbids anything for you as a Muslim to use it, then it's not permitted for you to sell it even to non-Muslims. I think that answers a lot of questions. That answers those who are working in stores or restaurants or shops where they sell anything which is forbidden. It is forbidden in Islam. It doesn't matter whether it's forbidden in other religions or it is not. Whether it was forbidden in the beginning, then the people you know, overwritten the ruling, it doesn't matter. In Islam it is forbidden, it abrogates any previous ruling. So as a Muslim, I'm not allowed to sell anything that has to do with the dead animals, period. Skin, fat, meat, it's not permitted. Uh, swine and wine and statues whatsoever. So the utilization of that and the selling of that is forbidden. Uh, as well. As I said, similarly that applies to the ivory and the bones of the dead uh, animals which are not uh, permitted for us to eat their flesh even uh, after the tazkiyah or the sacrifice. Uh, the term la tarkabu, which you may interpret it literally as do not ride upon, means do not sit upon. Okay, do not sit on. Al-Khaz, Al-Khaz is a kind of silk. And Nimar, the tiger skins, because they are predators. The following hadith, hadith number, uh, we have, some people are actually asking, can we ask questions in this uh, program as well? Yes, you may ask questions. This is a live episode. So we take, uh, some ahadith will study, some ahadith, some Quranic verses. And if you have uh, questions, the priority, of course, to questions relating to the topic, and there are many. Uh, then afterward, if, if there is a, an urgent question, we'll also give it a priority, insha'Allah. Okay, Sister Anisha, Ani. Hadith number 811, an Abi Mulayh, an Abihi radiyallahu anhu, أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى عن جلود السباع. And in another narration, نهى عن جلود السباع أن تفترش. Great! Because somebody may have understood from the previous hadith that, oh, the prohibition is only concerning tiger skins. No, it is general to cover the skin and the leather of all the predators, even if the skin was tanned. So the, it, 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 does it mean that I cannot use their skin in leather belts and purses? It's a big name brand, Gucci uh, or whatever. No, it is not permitted. If it is made of the skin of predators in Islam, it is not permissible uh, to use any of the now sister Fatima is asking is it applicable for fish when it's dead that's a good question that's a good question and to help you answer this question and also educate you in this regard I would like to elaborate furthermore do we have to slaughter fish in order to eat it when the fishermen catch fish do they say bismillah Allahu Akbar and they have to slaughter it before it comes to us and before it dies? Of course not. So they catch the fish and they keep it in their ships, in their boats, and then in the freezers, and it comes to us in the market days, months, or several months later, right? And it was never killed, it was never sacrificed. 
because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about performing wudu from the sea water, he said, huwa tahuru ma'uhu al-hillu maytatuh. Huwa tahuru ma'uhu al-hillu maytatuh. The seas, its water is tahur, can be used for further purification, whether fresh or salt water. Tahuru ma'u. We can make wudu out of it. We can make ghusl out of it. Al-hillu maytatuhu. Whatever we catch of the sea, uh, whether it's alive or dead, it's mayta. It's still halal. We don't have to do tazkiyah for the fish. We don't have to kill the shrimp. We don't have to separate the head from the body. Okay? Uh, we don't have to break the arms of the lobster. It's halal to eat it. You know, I know that some ulama have an issue, especially in the Hanafi madhab, with regards to the uh, consumption of lobster and shrimp because they may consider them uh, scavengers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَحْرِ وَطَعَامُهُ مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِسَّيَّارَةً So whatever we catch from the sea, as long as it is not poisonous, as long as it is not harmful, there are some fish which are very poisonous. You cannot eat it, you cannot eat its meat whatsoever, then you should avoid it uh, completely. Uh, so we don't have this uh, prohibition when it comes to the fish because it is not sacrificed or it's not uh, slaughtered. So this hadith tells us that it is absolutely forbidden to use the leather of the predators, whether it's a tiger, a lion, a fox, a wolf, a bear, we're not allowed to use their, you know, subhanAllah for animals, which either domestic animals uh, or, uh, you know, uh, the animals, the cattle, which we eat their flesh, that we use their skin, we tend their skin, we can use it for uh, the prayer rug, janamaz. It's nice to use the whole skin of a sheep, for instance, or a goat. You can use it uh, as a spread, as a carpet, or as a prayer rug. All of that is permissible. We make our clothes, the finest uh, sweaters are made of uh, sheep wool, and they're very expensive. They are halal. Okay? But if it is from an animal which is considered a predator, no, it is not permitted. Now, a new chapter, chapter 125, and a few minutes to go, and this chapter is very interesting. The Prophet وسلم, will teach us in this chapter, there's only one hadith, hadith number 812. Since we're talking about what to wear, what not to wear, what is permitted, what is the sunnah in wearing, and the length of the cloth, and all of that. Now this chapter will deal with Babu ma yaqulu idha labisa thawban jadidan aw na'lan aw nahwahu. The chapter deals with what shall we say as far as invocation, supplication. Hmm? Um, it's a dua to say when you wear something new. It's a dua to say when you wear something new. Will you be rewarded for that? Yes, it's an act of worship. It's an act of worship. So, the hadith which we have here is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu an. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا استجد ثوبا سماه باسمه عمامة أو قميصا أو رداء يقول اللهم لك الحمد أنت كسوتنيه أسألك خيره وخير ما صنع له وأعوذ بك من شره وشر ما صنع له The hadith is collected by Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi in the Sunan. So the great companion Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله عنه said when the messenger of Allah peace be upon him used to wear a new garment he would mention that garment's name Yani, for example, if he was wearing, if uh, he were to wear a new turban or a new shirt or kameez or thawb, he would say the following dua and mention it by name instead of using the pronoun 
which refers to the item of the cloth that he's wearing. I will share, <coughs> and I shall explain, insha'Allah, how would he do that. يقول اللهم لك الحمد أنت كسوتنيه أسألك خيره وخير ما صنع له وأعوذ بك من شره وشر ما صنع له What would he say? He would say O oh Allah, لك الحمد All the praises belong to you and thanks to you for clothing me with this garment Now, this garment he would say أنت كسوتنيه You have clothed me with this shirt with this turban, with this trousers, with these pair of shoes, with this tie, uh, with this watch, okay? This is the meaning of Samahu Bismi. He would name the outfit that he's wearing as a new outfit. And he would say, I ask you for the good of it and the good of what it was made for it. And I ask your protection from the evil of it and the evil of what it was made for it. Very interesting hadith. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw Umar ibn Khattab was wearing a nice white shirt and the kameez is something to wear from like the thawb from top to bottom. Okay? But it won't go uh, all the way to the ankles. He was wearing a nice kameez it was white, so the Prophet ﷺ asked him, Is it new or is it just washed? So Umar al-Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, it looks neat because it is just washed. So the Prophet ﷺ prayed for him. He said, Ilbis jadidan wa ish hamidan wa mit shahidan wa arzukhuka Allahu qurrata aynin fi dunya wal akhira. Qala wa iyaka ya Rasulullah. So whenever the person is wearing something new, take advantage and say this dua. Why? Fact number one, Allah the Almighty said, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever you enjoy of a blessing, it is simply from Allah. That's fact number one. Number two, Allah the Almighty said, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Remember your Lord have decreed, decreed لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you're grateful, I shall give you more. So take advantage every time you enjoy something or a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you give thanks to it, Allah will increase you of this blessing. And we'll give you more. This is a promise in the Quran. Many people are negligent of that. We give thanks because Allah is worthy of all thanks and praises. We give thanks because definitely I was able to buy this thawb or this outfit, you know. I was able to shop at Dillers or Melvin's or this or that big names or Macy's. Not because I have the cash, because Allah the Almighty provided me with the means to buy this thawb. Okay. So when you remember, this is a blessing from Allah, and it fits you, and it looks nice on you, you say, Alhamdulillah. So when you say, Alhamdulillah, it should be followed with the following. What do you say? <clears throat> In another narration, <clears throat> You're the one who clothes me with this thawb, with this turban, with this kufi, with this watch, with this, with this pair of shoes or pair of socks, even the undergarment. أنت كسوتني من غير حول لي ولا قوة. Then you say, أسألك خيره وخير ما صنع له. Oh Allah, I ask you for the good of it and the good of what it was made for it. And I seek refuge with you and protection with you again is the evil of it and the evil of what it was made for it. Of course, <coughs> there could be evil in the thawb, such as, for example, showing off pride, vanity. This is evil. This is, you know, big evil. So when you say so, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you against its evil, then you will be protected. In another narration, that as you're wearing the new thawb and you put it on and you say this dua, it takes off and it wipes out all your sins as well. It is simply because Allah is the most generous. He is the greatest. He is the most merciful. He is giving you countless opportunities to be forgiven through uh, giving thanks after eating, saying alhamdulillah after drinking, saying alhamdulillah upon wearing a new thawb. So you're, he's given you a new outfit and he's given you an opportunity
to be forgiven and also protect you against the evil of the uh, outfit. When you see somebody wearing something new, we learned what to say. Elbis jadidan wa ish shahidan wa mit shahidan. Wa razaqaka Allahu qurrata aynin fi dunya wal akhira. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an. And hopefully inshallah, we get a chance also to elaborate on that some more. But we ran out of time and until next episode. I leave you all in the care of Allah. I say this and I pray for you for me and for you. And say Allah to the Prophet Muhammad and to his family and to his friends. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him All in humans to be the best And give his best religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgiving all about it in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price.